I want to take a step back now and reflect on a crucial event that stirred political upheaval this week, a story that may have fallen through the cracks amid Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine, but a very important one nonetheless. This week, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan was ousted in a no-confidence vote over allegations of economic mismanagement, putting an end to his tumultuous term in office. But the man replacing him, Shabazz Sharif, is no stranger to political drama either. In fact, this whole episode represents another chapter in the history of dysfunctional politics in Pakistan. Let's take a closer look. It is often said if you want to break into Pakistani politics, you need to have one of two things. A family with a long history in politics or enjoy close ties with the all-powerful military or, better still, both. But keeping those forces on your side isn't always that easy. It's no wonder then that no Pakistani prime minister has ever completed a full term in office. Take the Sharifs, for example, a vastly influential and wealthy family that has been embedded in the country's political fabric for decades. Shebaz Sharif is the new interim prime minister, despite facing unresolved corruption charges. His older brother, Nawaz, held the top job three times, and like every other Pakistani premier before him and after him, his terms were cut short and overshadowed by scandal. Well, in 2014, cricketer-turned-politician Imran Khan led thousands of protesters to Islamabad against Nawaz Sharif's rule, shutting down the capital during what was a sit-in that lasted months. They didn't get justice through the courts, through the parliament. Eventually, they had to come to the streets and actually get rid of him. And this is exactly the same case with him. Unless we come out in the streets, his children will be winning elections because he buys everyone. Well, it became known as the Azadi March or Freedom Movement and eventually helped propel Khan to the premiership along with what is widely believed to be the support of the military establishment. Well, now Khan is out of power, in large part thanks to campaigns led by the Sharifs and with the alleged support of Pakistan's military, who withdrew its support for Khan in recent months. But the Sharifs aren't the only leading Pakistani family that loves relishing in the political limelight. If the name Bhutto rings a bell, well, it should. In the 1970s, after a bloody civil war that led to the partition of Pakistan and created what is now Bangladesh, Sultakar Ali Bhutto emerged as a charismatic leader who rallied the masses with a socialist manifesto. But soon earned the ire of the military and after... Almost four years in office, he was seized in a military coup and later executed by a top general who himself had handpicked. And, of course, the Bhutto family affair didn't end there. Benazir Bhutto, the daughter of uh, Sultakar Bhutto, became Pakistan's prime minister in 1988, taking over as the head of uh, the PPP, Pakistan People's Party. She led her country for two short terms, both ending over allegations of corruption and misconduct that she staunchly denied. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that her son would follow in her footsteps. Bilawal Bhutto Zadari took over as head of the second largest political party in Pakistan and is the son of not one, but two former Pakistani leaders. His father, of course, is Asif Ali Zadari. He endorsed Shabazz Sharif's appointment as prime minister and has been rumoured to be a contender for the country's next foreign minister. In an interview I did with him recently, he couldn't confirm those reports, but got me thinking, if they were true, how much longer could Pakistan's game of dynasty politics continue? How much more political upheaval should Pakistanis be willing to take before they say enough is enough? While Bilawal did concur that dynasty politics exist in Pakistan, here is what else he had to say. Criticize nepotism and, and, and dynastic politics as, 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 all, as much as you want, uh, but whoever the people of Pakistan decide, uh, that is what at the end of the day should matter. 
As far as myself is concerned, my grandfather was, was hanged by a military dictator. My mother was uh, assassinated by a, a terrorist and a, and a dictator's uh, connivance. And I was forced uh, into Pakistani uh, politics as a young, young age. I didn't uh, choose this life, it chose me. But Pakistani people will decide soon enough through elections who they want leading their country. And if it is Shebaz Sharif, he has a long and arduous road ahead. He'll be inheriting an ailing economy with inflation in the double digits, making it extremely difficult for average Pakistanis to make ends meet. And while many may be looking at his ascension as the start of a new page, a steel dynasty scion with close ties to the military sounds a lot like Pakistan's political past haunting its present. And maybe, just maybe, that realization will make people say enough. As one analyst put it, corruption allegations against Sharif will persist and it is inevitable that regular Pakistanis will tire of the prime minister's office being treated as a family heirloom between brothers.